Hey guys, it's Convolver here and today we are going to talk about PC products. So before we begin with this video, I would like to tell you guys that this is the second video of the entire PC build journey that I'm doing on YouTube with my sister. So you can check out the other video that is over here, which goes over the entire build itself and how we put the PC together, you know, from scratch. So in this video, we're going to go in depth with the details of the products that we selected for this PC and why we went with those because this PC is majorly going to be used for content creation work such as video editing and music production. Also this video is not sponsored by anyone. This is just my honest opinion about the products that I purchased for my sister and uh, you guys can find the links to all the products in the description. Uh, these are Amazon affiliate links. So if you buy from these links, it'll cost the same for you guys, but I get a small percentage of it, which helps the channel. So let's talk about the individual products that we chose while building the PC. So starting with the CPU, as it is the brain of the computer, we went with the Ryzen 7 1700 for this build, which is an 8 core processor with 16 threads. Now, since this PC is majorly going to be used for video editing, it was important to get a CPU with the highest number of threads that could fit in the budget. As far as music production is concerned, more cores don't necessarily mean better performance all the time, as there are many operations that a DAW performs which are sequential where operations need to wait before the previous one is executed, which don't create opportunities for parallel processing every time due to the nature of how the DAW works. But you can always do certain things to create opportunities for multi-core performance within the project, such as allowing threaded processing within the DAW and using multiple mixer tracks for the same things instead of sending tracks to individual send tracks for parallel processing. You can read more about this in the manual of the DAW that you are operating on. FL Studio has done some excellent documentation of the same in their online user manual which you can read if you are interested to know more. I'll put the link to it in the description. Now, one could ask why didn't we go with the second generation processor instead of the first one? And the reason for that is twofold. One is that we live in India. So due to the added customs and shipping costs, the second generation of Ryzen processor costs relatively more compared to the first generation. The second generation processor with 8 core costs about 22,000 Indian rupees. So we went with the first generation which costed us about 17,000 Indian rupees. Which in my opinion does not really justify the 7.4% performance boost that the second generation gives over the first generation. Secondly, this was bought right before for the release of AMD's third generation Ryzen processors. So it didn't make sense to go ahead and buy the second generation Ryzen and then to get burned by the fact that a better product has come to the market. So we decided to save some monies and stick to the first generation instead. Besides, we can always upgrade it later if need be as our motherboard supports it. Which brings us to the next item in the list and that is the motherboard itself. So for this build, we went with the MSI's B450 Tomahawk as It has RGB I'm just kidding, this ain't Linus Tech Tips <coughs> Well, we went with this board as it is a full-sized ATX with AMD's proprietary socket AM4 which is what the Ryzen 7 1700 processor sits on and the B450 chipset is perfect for overclocking control without the need for high PCI bandwidth since we are not really going to be running multi-GPU configuration in this setup. Being a full-sized ATX board makes this motherboard great for PCIe Express expansion and upgradability. Speaking of upgradability, this motherboard supports DIMMs up to 64GB of DDR4 RAM, which is great. but. I'm not sure if we will be upgrading anytime soon as 32 gigs in itself is a bit overkill. Which brings us to the RAM. So for this build, we went with a pair of 16 GB Corsair Vengeance LPX rated at 3200 MHz. As the PC is majorly going to be used for video editing and animation, so it made sense to get a good amount of RAM at a high speed. Video editing softwares often hog up a lot of RAM as the project keeps getting bigger. So we went with the 32 GBs at 3200 MHz. We did find cheaper alternatives to what we bought with lesser RAM speeds but since Ryzen processors prefer faster RAMs, we went with the 3200 MHz DIMM instead. 
To check for compatibility, we went to the motherboard manufacturer's website and selected our CPU. And it gave us a vendor list of RAMs which have been tested by them on this motherboard with Summit Ridge processors, which is the one we bought for this build. One thing to remember is Samsung B die based RAMs work really well with Ryzen processors. Now, we didn't really get the kit with 216 gigs for this build as 32 gig kit with 216 GBs were difficult to find as most consumers in India usually go for 8 gigs or 16 gig kits. The thing is that buying kits does not really solve any problem. Sure, you can have the satisfaction of the fact that these RAMs were tested together by the manufacturer, but other than that, it serves no other purpose, as you could just as easily buy another RAM from the same manufacturer with the same product model and it would work just as fine as the kit would, which is what we did. The motherboard manufacturers wouldn't even give you an option for upgrading your RAM if they knew that it would lead to system crashes or compatibility issues. It would just be two slots every time and every time you buy new RAM you would have to buy new kits, which we know is not the case. However, if the cards are too different from one another, then you could have a situation where there can be some compatibility issues or system crashes, but that does not mean that you cannot buy two RAMs of the same model separately for one system. So a good way to go about it would be to just get RAMs which were manufactured in the same batch by checking for the manufacturing dates on the RAM and making sure that they are the same or not too far apart from each other. Then to get the full speed of the RAM, all we had to do was turn on the XMP settings in the UEFI while booting and it was all good to go. Now moving on to the most interesting part of the entire build, the graphics processor. As this is the most expensive part of the entire build and the product which delayed the entire build by nearly 3 months. I remember we were almost set on purchasing the NVIDIA 1070 when we first started planning out the build in April, which costed somewhere around 50,000 Indian rupees at that time. And then after doing a little more research, we moved on to the 1070 Ti and then the RTX 2060 and then the RTX 2070. But AMD had just announced the release of their new line of 7 nanometer processor technology. So we definitely wanted to check that out before we pulled the trigger. It was the toughest to finalize out of all the products as not only because it was the most expensive device in the system, but because there was a fierce competition between Nvidia and AMD during the time we were purchasing the products. I mean, look at this. Nvidia launches its super series just two days after AMD releases its RX 5000 series. So after waiting for one more month for new products to hit the market, we finalized getting the RX 5700 XT. However, the stock RX 5700 XT did come with the single blower design which introduced some heating issues. So we waited for another one month for the partner models to roll out with better dual fan cooling technology and then we finally got the Sapphire Pulse RX 5700 XT once it hit the Indian market which served the purpose really well. Featuring AMD's latest second generation 7 nanometer GPU with RDNA architecture, 8 GBs of DDR6 VRAM, and a whopping 2560 stream processors with a well known BIOS switch for quiet and performance mode. The GPU comes with one HDMI for 4K at 60Hz and three display ports at resolutions of 8K at 60Hz or 5K at 120Hz. The GPU was an important part of the build as it is essential for animation work as software such as DaVinci Resolve make good use of it by distributing the load amongst the GPU and the CPU. For music production, it's not that essential to get a beefy GPU as most of the work is done by the CPU alone, but it is good to have as FL Studio workflow gets significantly better with multiple monitors. For storage, we chose two devices for the OS and the software installation 
we chose the 970 evo m.2 nvme ssd by samsung which is connected to the motherboard through pci which is a different technology than the slower sata based hard disk and sshd connectors the m.2 nvme drives these days offer throughputs up to 3500 megabytes per second which is almost 35 times faster than the read write speeds of the traditional hard drive running at 7200 rpm through a sata 3 connector So we had to get that. Apart from that, we got an additional one terabyte storage just for keeping media stuff like videos, images, documents, etc. But something tells me I might have to upgrade this in the future. Hmm. Which brings us to the case. Based on the budget and the components that we chose, we went with the NZXT H500 mid tower as it had a nice minimal look with all steel, which gives it a really premium feel. The case has an effective negative pressure airflow design, keeping the CPU and the GPU thermals at bay. But I might switch the stock fans later in the future to something better, which has speed control, as these fans run at full speed, which could bring up the noise floor in the room. The case has nice cable management tools such as zip ties and velcro straps which are good for routing things properly and keeping the build looking clean. The case also features 7 PCI slots and 2 USB 3 generation 1 connections with audio and mic inputs in the front panel. And the thing I like the most is the tempered glass side panel so that I can just look at the PC all day and get inspired. The power supply is pretty straightforward. We put all our products into pcpartspicker.com and checked what minimum power requirements are of the system. And then we went and checked the specifications given by the manufacturer of the GPU and bought a power supply rated slightly higher than it for this build. Finally, the network adapter. Our motherboard did not come equipped with a pre-installed Wi-Fi adapter, so we went ahead and purchased the TP-Link Archer T6E. This is a solid network card which operates both on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bandwidth, allowing us to get slightly higher internet speeds than before. That's because this card operates on the 802.11 AC dual band standard as well as the 802.11 N standard which is perfect for high intensity network usage and it has backward compatibility for 802.11 ABGN standards and that about wraps it all up All right guys that's it for today now if you found this helpful then you can check out my Patreon account over here Uh this is something I recently set up so you can check out all the items that I have in the menu and see what you like. Other than that there is a Discord server that I have recently set up as well. So if you have any questions regarding this build or otherwise then you can hit me up over there and also speak to other producers in the community. All right guys that's it for today. Thanks for watching and if you found this helpful then consider hitting the like and subscribe button.